Hello guys, it's Unders and we're back in with a little logic tutorial today. Um, what I'm up to here is I'm just doing a bit of like sound design where to create some tones and I'm just using Waves Talk here and just abusing sound a little bit. If you haven't come across Waves Talk, it's effectively a drum tuner, but it allows for you to grab a small area and then tune it up and down. I'm just using that to abuse some sound, but you see how it's currently pulsing up and down? That's not a normal function of talk. That's something I've done in Logic to cause that to happen. And I'll just show you what I'm doing, but it's just uh, basically trying to create some interesting textures. So I've just got a patch that I'm using in Sculpture. I wanted to create like a hand pan type sound and then I've just been abusing that. So if we have a listen to that real quick. Now if we introduce the modulator back in, so it's pulsing torque, it's just creating some cool tones. I'm not after the whole passage, I'm looking to take small chunks of this, the in most interesting bits. Now, the reason I'm showing you this, because I know talk's not part of logic, so we're going to bin that off, is the modulation side and the fact that you can link things like this to LFOs and get them working. Seems a lot of people aren't really familiar with that. So let's mute this guy. We'll get rid of both of these. And we're going to copy the channel. So Command and D. And we'll bring the MIDI over as well. Sure, why not? And let's get rid of talk. And let's just bash the EQ on here. Let's introduce the low pass. We're going to bring that right down, make it kind of harsh. Uh, what do we got there? All right, that gives some interesting lower tones. Now, if we use the modulator here, we can see what it's getting up to. So there's a representation at the bottom here that shows it's creating a sine wave and it's relatively slow. If we bump that up, we can see that it's going a lot harder there. It's crushing right at the top because we've got an offset of 21%. So it's exceeding its limit, it's maxing out and then dipping back down. If we bring the offset back to zero, it should just be a regular sine wave going the whole distance there. Okay. And on the rate wise, it's going over one bar. Now what's important just above this little readout here is something that says two. Now if we change that to learn plugin parameter and we now twiddle the frequency, look at that. It's now going to pulse the whole frequency across that EQ. So if we play back. Uh, that's not particularly desirable, but what we can do is hone it in to, the, to what we're after. Let's just shrink you down so we can see what's going on. So if we reduce the amount it's moving by to be much less. And then we don't want it to go all the way down to like 20 hertz. We're going to offset so it's moving around here a bit. So here what we've got. Let's go a bit quicker. Let's go to 1 over 4. Then we're just going to tweak it once we're listening to it. Now the EQ is probably not the best thing to use for this, you're probably better off using a filter, but it gives a better representation for you guys so you can see what's going on. I just thought this was a really useful tool that a lot of people don't really seem aware of. You can route pretty much any parameter to this, and as you've seen, I was doing it with talks, so you can do it with third parties as well. If the parameter is modulatable, as in the DAW can see that parameter and make edits to it, you can link it up to this and it gives you a whole world of things. You can apply an envelope to it. So I could even apply an envelope filter to something similar, for example. So I don't know if we make a boost up here and then let's link. What was that? The green one. Let's link the frequency of that to that. We can have so like an envelope will trigger and move that frequency around as well. <laughs> And we've created a 
a whole new kind of crazy thing going on and we can just get as creative with that as we want it's super useful for using and abusing especially if you've got something you know like you're only working with the eqs and you haven't got this automatability in them like you have with some others just use it and abuse it get creative with it i mean look at the craziness it's got going on now could feed different sounds into that and get all kinds of different great little nuances back it's just having the time to do it which is what we're sitting down doing today so guys i hope it was useful for you if it was please bash like on the video subscribe to the channel if you've got any questions or other things you would like to see throw those in the comments down below and i look forward to hearing from you again